Hey, what's up coach? Welcome back to our channel. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe. Every single week we're putting out content that is specific to starting, growing and building a sports training business where you are. So in today's interview, I had the pleasure of interviewing coach Kaylee. Kaylee is a soccer trainer who is based out in Oakland, California. This interview is one that you definitely want to watch. You definitely want to take notes. Kaylee goes deep into how she started her business, how she grew her business, where she sees the industry in the next two to five years and how important private training is to kids. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and I hope you enjoy today's interview. Sure. Um, so I, well, started with, in soccer as a player. I played my whole life. Um, I played club growing up here in the States um, and was fortunate enough to start playing competitive at a pretty young age. And through there, you know, I um, earned a scholarship to play in college, Boise State University in Idaho. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up loving soccer and playing. And then when I graduated and came home, a former basketball coach of mine in, in elementary school um, mentioned that the high school he was coaching basketball at needed a soccer coach. And I started coaching a junior varsity team. Um, and then, you know, from there, I really started to love coaching. And I coached there for a few years before entering grad school. And then some career changes, um, I gave coaching a break but then I got back into it coaching a varsity team mm -hmm. um in the bay area and then um decided to give team coaching a rest and started my own training business okay excellent so tell us a little bit about your your training business then what do you specialize in yeah so it's just personal soccer training um so I specialize in you know one-to-one -one from uh, four, I go, that's the most I will train in a group for an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and so I focus on mostly like, you know, technical skills, some tactical, but mostly technical skills for field players. Okay, excellent. And what's your, what's your favorite age group to, to coach? Uh, yeah, I have to say high school. I just, I like the teenagers because um, it's that transition before, you know, they're going to play in college. And I just really... Mm -hmm. Um, enjoy play, uh, coaching that level in that age group. Excellent, excellent. So how, how tell us a little bit, so when, when you first started, uh, how did you get your first client then? Yeah, that's a great question. So actually, like, I started uh, personal soccer training kind of like on happenstance. A friend of mine from high school, he used to do uh, soccer training, mm -hmm. um, but he underwent, like, knee surgery. And so he kind of asked me to take over his clientele essentially and he didn't really have plans to get back into it so he you know offered me a handful of his clients and then kind of led me to this app called coach up app and I you know I made a profile and I was able to gain a lot of clientele on there as well mm -hmm. and so mostly this like word of mouth like you know marketing on social media mostly Instagram um has helped and um word of mouth so okay. yeah that's really cool, really cool. So uh, how, how many clients are you currently uh, training at the moment? Uh, at the moment, I would say I have like 10 steady clients. Um, yeah. Are they all different ages? They are. Um, they range from like five years old to high school. Okay, cool. So when, when you first started your, your training business, what would you say was your biggest obstacle? when you first started coaching? Yeah. Um, well, coaching team sports, I think the biggest obstacle is, um, <laughs> well, it depends on the environment. So I was coaching at a school that their soccer team was not very good. It wasn't very good for a lot. Like I played against that soccer team when I was in high school and we used to, we used to beat them by a lot of goals, unfortunately. So <laughs> there was this long standing of them not being very like committed and 
good. So um, my my biggest challenge there was getting them to show up to practice, to be honest. <laughs> okay. um, as far as training, my the business goes, um, I think my biggest obstacle is just maintaining clients and gaining new clients. I think that that's probably my biggest challenge because I can't, I, I have a full-time job, so it's hard to manage like all of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. What's your, what's your most favorite part of running a business then? Um, it's basically, it's mine. So I get to make my own schedule. Um, it's, it, I, there's like, you know, a different sense of pride and the effort that I put into it versus like me working for someone else. Like it's mine. And at the end of the day, it reflects on me. So I just enjoy, um, you know, I just enjoy the entirety of it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So what would you say to uh, a coach that's either watching or listening to, to this interview and they, they want to start a business? Uh, but haven't yet what's what's one thing that you would recommend they do honestly just start I think that that's probably the hardest part for anyone with starting a business that you know you have a lot of thoughts like what if this and what if that and you still have those thoughts even you know years into it um and I have them often myself but I think at the end of the day it's like you grow so much when you start a business because it's really just you against that, not against, but it's just you, you know, running the show. And so it, there's a sense of like power that comes with running your own show and just, you know, persevering through all the adversity that comes with it because, you know, clientele will come and go. Um, you know, there's always something you can work on and better, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a multiple things. So it's, it's also hard to like focus on one thing. And that, that's probably my biggest challenge is, um, I have all of these thoughts and ideas, but like, it's hard for me to focus on one to get one done. So I just try to like, I'm trying to figure out a system that works for me and like, you know, organizing myself and my thoughts and like taking on one thing at a time, mm -hmm. entity of it at a time. So I can like accomplish those things. So I think mm -hmm. it's just, you know, just have an open mind. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Love that. So what, what would you say is a, is a high quality training session then? Um, I think definitely a high point is when I see clients improving. I think like, I mean, soccer is such a skilled oriented sport. Um, so it's really about, you know, ingraining the, the, the basics over and over and over and going over the same thing over and over, which can be like boring and monotonous to a lot of players. Um, but I really... I'm a firm believer in you've got to, you've got to do drills over and over and over um, mm -hmm. in order to get that mastery. So when I see my clients like, you know, doing it, you know, going through that process, like, oh, okay, like they make mistakes, um, but they just, but they work through the adversity and they don't give up. I love that. And then they improve. And so and I really try to highlight on that because I think it's easy to like, you know, for anyone to make a mistake and to kind of tank so mm. um yeah i love to watch them like overcome adversity overcome something that was challenging for them and to see them thrive mm -hmm. so where does your where does your coaching style uh, originate from yeah that's a great question um and i've never i haven't really reflected on that too much but i think like i mean eh. I mean, I, I definitely mm -hmm. I grew up in the States and, you know, I'm not a huge United States soccer fan <laughs> um, and coaching fan, all, you know, all the time. I think that, like, I think soccer has evolved a lot over the past decade. I think, like, at least here in the States, I think that coaches are starting to take on more of, like, the worldly view of um, soccer and and how a lot of, like, European and South American um clubs train and mm. how the how the coaches coach yeah. um which you know is a huge reason as to why a lot of um a lot why soccer is you know better in mostly every other country except for here mm. um at least on the men's side women's side not so much but the men's side yes but um honestly i think i've taken bits and pieces from my own coaches that i've had yeah. mostly in my life 
you know, I definitely like think of reflect on coaches that I've had, even when I was like super little, even to like my first coach to my college coach. And I try to take, you know, from all of them, because I think they all brought something that was unique and um, kind of had an everlasting, you know, impression on my life and as a player. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Love that. So when you, when you bring on a new client or when you're working with a new player, What's a, what's a few things you look for in that player? Yeah, I mean, I, I really try to, like, focus on not just, like, the, them as, like, physical soccer player, but, like, where they're at mentally and emotionally because every player is not at the same, you know, in the same space. Um, so some players, you know, they need more, more motivation and, so, you know, some need more a push, whereas mm -hmm. some need, you know, not as much. Um, you just have to really like know your players and know your clients and figure out what makes them tick and what works for them. Um, but everyone deserves, you know, everyone deserves to be pushed to a certain limit, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I try, I do my best to like observe and study them and figure them out where they're at mentally and then go from there. Mm -hmm. well, how do you currently, uh, so how do you market and sell your, your business then? What is, what is the number one uh, way you market? Mm, yeah. Your business? Uh, social media and word of mouth. That's pretty much it. And okay. yeah. So like people, you know, hopefully sharing my content, not everybody does. That's okay. But, um, and then like other parents telling other parents about my business. Okay. Awesome. And how have you managed to get most of your clients? Has it been through referrals or coach up? How has it been? Um, I think referral. Referrals. So, so Kaylee, where, where do you see your, your training business in the next five years from now? Then? That's a great question. I honestly don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really don't know because uh, mm. I have to like, I feel like I'm kind of like, I, I, I'm at a phase where I need to, you know, reflect on that and figure that out. And I haven't really put a lot of thought into it. Like I'm an educator, my school year just ended. So I've kind of like just starting to really get back into training again more consistently. So mm. that's a great question though. I, I don't know the answer to that right now. <laughs> but do you see yourself still in business in five years? I do, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I really want employees per se. Um, I don't mm. know, I, but I definitely do see myself still doing it. Okay. And, yeah. and how, how, how have you found managing like a full-time job and mm -hmm. training? Um, you know, it can, it can, sometimes it can interfere, but for the most part, because, you know, I train kids. So like their school hours are my school hours. So yeah. the, the schedules align yeah. and then I have summers off. So that's the best bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. So where, where do you see a uh, private training going in the U S in the next two to five years? Yeah, I think that it's a big thing. You know, I think like the pandemic really like encouraged or inspired, I guess you could say people to, um, to start more personal training, like sport specific training businesses, not just soccer, but like all sports. Um, I've seen multiple people that I know of, like, you know, from high school, um, yeah, doing the same thing in, like, the, the whatever sport they played in. So I think mm -hmm. that it's going to continue to be, you know, it, it, it's, it, gives, it gives kids an edge. You know, at this mm -hmm. point, if, you're, if your goal is to play at the next level after high school, like, and you're not doing extra, like, you, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. like, what, like, what, you know... It, I mean, in my opinion, I'm like, okay, like, if, you know, I were a parent, I would be putting my kid in the arena, like, you're going to have personal training, you know, to get those extra reps, to focus on specific skills, um, anything to give an edge is mm -hmm. beneficial. Okay, love that, love that. So, so Kelly, I'm going to finish with uh, my last question, and this is a two-part question. First one is, what does failure mean to you? And the second one is, how important is taking risks in business? Um, failure is like, is, as much as I would hate to admit it, but it's just like, it's absolutely necessary. And that's what makes people grow and makes people succeed. Like, 
I know for a fact in my own life, like if I haven't failed at things that I probably wouldn't be where I'm at right now. And I know like even looking into my future, like I know I need to fail even more in order to grow. And that's okay. Cause that's just, that's where you see growth the most. Um, and I think that should be, I think that's like the goal. I think that should be the goal. Like I want to just continue to grow, but without like, that doesn't mean like every time I do something, I'm going to get it right the first time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, and I think, you know, there's such a negative connotation of failure, uh, the word failure, but I think like in my mind or in anyone's mind, like kind of realizing like, well, in order, if I don't fail, then I'm not learning from something and I'm not, that means I'm not growing. Mm -hmm. So learning and growing comes from failure and that's a beautiful thing, so. I'm sorry, I forgot the second question. <laughs> <laughs> so the second one is, how important is it to take risks? Oh, it's absolutely important. I feel like I've really just started to really embrace that in my life. Um, and I'm, you know, like just scratching the surface of that, I feel like. Um, in my opinion, I feel like I should take more risks. Um, but it just is important as failing taking risks because you know if you don't put yourself out there then you're holding yourself back that means that you're really not living your whole you know your whole life and um, living out opportunities that can, may come your way and mm -hmm. I don't want to live a life like that so mm -hmm. okay love that love that perfect Kaylee so uh, if any coach or anyone watching or listening wants to uh, get in contact with you or follow uh, your business what would be the best way to do that? Um, the best way to get in contact with me is to follow my training business Instagram, which is cap underscore soccer training. Um, that would be the best way. Okay, perfect. And what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll put that underneath the video so anyone can, can, can follow and, and, and check, you, check you out and follow your journey. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Perfect, Kaylee. Well, thank you very much for jumping on here, uh, sharing your, your journey, your story with us. And I hope to, to connect with you in the near future again. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. No problem. <laughs> I want to thank Coach Kaylee for appearing on our show and for the interview. Now, if you are a coach and you are in soccer, you're in basketball, baseball, uh, football, whichever sport you're in, you are a coach and you have a private training business and you would like to be interviewed, okay, reach out via contacting me or my email below. It's makemoneycoachingsports at gmail.com. We'll get you featured on our podcast and we would love to have you on the show. Okay, so if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you want to get in contact with me for a one-to-one -one, uh, Zoom call to see how I can help you to grow and scale your business, reach out to me. My Canonly link is in the description of this video. You can click it and book a free 15 to 20 minute call with me today. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.